So, uh, welcome everybody. My name is Robert Villanueth. I'm the chair of the chemistry and biochemistry department that uh, Ray Garcia spent, uh, I guess, nearly half of his life in. And it saddens me to have to welcome everybody for this event, um, but uh, this is all about celebrating Ray Garcia. And I want to talk a little bit about what Ray's background, um, how he ended up here, and some of the things he did here. Um, and so let me just start. So we're here to celebrate the life of Ray Garcia, who was a beloved professor of biochemistry um, in our department. He was here for 32 years, uh, from 1982 to just recently. Um, Ray was born nearly 73 years ago in the small desert town of Blythe, California. So many of you probably drove through Blythe. Um, Ray, of course, lived there. Um, and he, uh, he did well in high school. I'll say a little bit about that later, but um, he ended up going to Cal Poly San Luis Obispo where he earned a bachelor's degree in biology. And so uh, knew he had an interest in science, but um, service called. And I think service may be a theme that we're gonna hear quite a bit about, about Ray Garcia. So he, he joined the, uh, the United States Army and served during the Vietnam War um, in the Army, but luckily for us, he didn't go to Vietnam. He was stateside the whole time. Uh, he worked as a court reporter. Um, he then uh, went back to school, uh, going to UC Riverside, and earned a, uh, a PhD degree in biochemistry, um, working on uh, lipid metabolism, which was sort of the theme of his research uh, while he was here. Um, he began his career um, as our beloved biochemistry professor. I'll go ahead and say that again, because he really was beloved. Uh, on uh, September 8th, 1982. And, and I happen to know that date because I remember that date. Um, it was Ray's first day in the department. Uh, and I was a student uh, who had just graduated. I was working with Tony Andrioli. And I was in Tony's lab um, getting my, uh, my final parting um, advice from, from Tony uh, as I was heading off to, to get a PhD at Berkeley. And um, in uh, bounds, this uh, really energetic guy who says, I'm the new biochemist. And he introduced himself to me. And, you know, and I said, oh, and I'm walking out. So the same day he walked in, I walked out. Um, but one thing I remember thinking at the time was that this guy has so much energy, he's going to be a really good match for Cal State LA. I, I think he's going to serve everybody well. And when I came back 13 years later as an assistant professor, of course, Ray interviewed me, and uh, he still had that limitless energy. And had that really all the way up to just about the end. Um, he was still coming in even when he was ill in the past, uh, in the past year, um, but he still had concern, of course, for his students, for making sure that everything was prepared for the next person to take all his space, and so was worried about my having to deal with it, and so didn't want me to deal with it, so he was, he was there um, all the way to the end. Um, Ray's research focus was on the dietary effects of um, cholesterol and cholesterol modulators, especially jojoba oil, which comes from a desert plant. I'm not sure they grow in Blythe, but they probably can grow in Blythe. Um, and looking at the effects of these on, um, on lipoprotein profiles, which has a big impact on uh, leading to cardiovascular disease if you have the wrong profile. Um, and uh, so why was he interested in, in studying uh, cholesterol metabolism? It was because he, he would tell this story um, almost at every meeting that um, all the male Garcias in his family would pass away by the time they were in their late 60s um, of heart disease. And so it was very much something that affected his family. And he didn't want that to happen not so much to him, I don't think he cared so much about himself, but he wanted to serve others by finding the reason why cholesterol metabolism gets, uh, is dysregulated and how it can be prevented, especially something simple like a dietary adjustment. And so that was the first example of Ray wanting to help others. His choice of research was about helping others. 
Um, Ray's mother was a nurse uh, in Blythe, and his father was an OBGYN who delivered, I think, the entire population of Blythe um, <laughs> from you know the 19, I guess, late 1930s on. Um, and his parents inculcated in young Ray uh, the value of service to others, um, and I and I really think he learned that well and continued to to serve others throughout his life. Um, Ray would tell the story um, that his father, who grew up in a small town in so South Texas, in Falfurrias, Texas, and I don't know how many of you are from Texas or know about the situation in Texas at that point in time, um, but he was able to go on to medical school and, and become a physician. And it turned out he was the only doctor in Blythe, um, and people would say, well, you don't look like a doctor. And it was for obvious reasons that people would say that because, well, he was of Hispanic descent. And in the 1940s, perhaps there weren't too many uh, physicians of, of Latino background. Um, and so Ray's response was not to become bitter about the obvious bias that he saw, um, but rather to work even harder. And he worked hard in school and had a really good GPA. And he was really good in sports, lettering in at least two sports, I think. Um, and expected excellence of himself at all times. And he expected excellence of his students as well when he came here, but didn't cut them off if they didn't excel immediately. Um, as is typical of Cal State LA, he would give second, third, and fourth chances. Um, and those students became PhDs and physicians. And, and it was because of those extra chances. Um, and so here at Cal State LA, Ray taught many thousands of students the subject of biochemistry, which is, of course, an imp important component to understand if you want to become something like a physician. And an uncountable number, I'm sure it's countable, but I, I did go count the number. Um, clearly, hundreds of students went on to become physicians. And most of these students were, of course, our students that were mostly minority. And they become now minority medical doctors serving in communities here and, and abroad. And um, so Ray's response was, oh, take that, racism. I'll show you. Um, Ray's legacy is one of unfailing service to our students. Um, he was not here for a check. This wasn't his job. He was here to serve others. Um, he wasn't even here just to advance his own research. He was here to serve others. And if it meant um, showing them how to do research so that they can advance, that was the purpose of the research. Um, besides, of course, potentially helping lots of people with heart disease. Um, the world lost a wonderful man of service in, in Ray Garcia. And I think if each of us recalls what Ray meant to us and all he did for us, and just try to emulate him at least once a day, I truly believe the world will be a much better place. <clears throat> so um, the plan uh, this afternoon is for several faculty members um, who worked very closely with Ray to share some of their stories. Um, and then this mic will be available for anybody to, to come up and share some stories about, about Ray Garcia and what he meant to you personally. It will then be followed by a video presentation um, prepared by our own Bill Wimberly. Um, and uh, there will be some final comments. And then finally, we'll retire to the patio where we will have uh, food and, and drinks.